Modern day, Rorschach's journal. Having a top chef viewing party this weekend. The squad's coming over with a request. A request for my infamous spinach dip. Go to Whole Foods. Drive around the parking lot, circle it for hours. Feel like a hamster in a wheel. Can't find a parking spot nearby, so I have to park. Several aisles away. Finally get into the store. Go to the bakery aisle. No more gluten-free focaccia bread. The world is dark. Unfair. Full of twists and turns. Just when you think there's light at the end of the tunnel, you realize that parking spot you found is handicap only. There is no God to save us. Only madness. We are only mere spectators on the ride into oblivion. And I've got a first class seat on the deep dive into the descent. Welcome to another edition of Hop Heroes, the show where we talk about our favorite drinks and our favorite heroes. I'm your host, Jordan Nareth, and with me as always, we have talented artist and comic enthusiast, J.R. Gonzalez. Sup, sup. What's up, playa? How you living, man? How was your holiday? We are coming in with our last episode of 2019. God, I just literally realized this is our last episode of the year, and I hate myself so much. This is how I'm ending my my year. God, it's it's bad. It's more what? Prominent on the, I'm talking the about ending right your now. year. You look great, man. Yeah. And we'll get to that. But I, w- I want to know how Jr.'s Christmas was, man. Did you have any highlights? Uh, Christmas was great. I got um all the books that I wanted. I got a lot of. I got the Amazing Spider Man Omnibus Volume One, which is Amazing uh, Amazing Fantasy Number One, and then Amazing Spider Man One through Thirty. Uh, and then Amber kind of went ham on Christmas gifts this year, so I, I feel a little bad because I did not go ham on Christmas <laughs> gifts. Now next year you're gonna have to. Go so she yeah, got you a bunch of shit, and you didn't like, get her a bunch of shit, or like for everybody else. Dude, she got everything on my list. I put things on my list that are even hard to get, and she got it. And I'm oh, like, shit. Uh-huh. why did you buy that comic book? <laughs> like that is like she bought me the first appearance of uh, Morbulus Number. One like his, uh, it's, so it's an amazing one on one. She found it and bought it because she loves you, and you know, like that she loves you more than you love one. her. Obviously, that must be what it is. That, shut your mouth because <laughs> you're just gonna get me in trouble. I did buy her an air fryer, so oh, that's that's from the heart, dude. That's so like that's <laughs> deep. She probably dreamed <laughs> of that as a little girl. <laughs> you know, like one day there's gonna be this technology out there that can fry things with air, and that's what I want for Christmas. Yes, got it. I feel like that's like a selfish gift, low key, because like she's gonna make those egg rolls, and you know you're gonna <laughs> yeah, eat bro. Those egg Dude, rolls. I already started. It's a gift that gives <laughs> back. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I uh, I went down to Washington for the week for Christmas, and Christmas was cool. I got some some nice stuff. I got some video games and some clothes, um, and we had our fancy football banquet. And I uh, got last place two years ago. Um, but I wasn't in Washington for the banquet. And then uh, my buddy Aaron got last place this year. And when you get last place in our league, um, we have a banquet every year. And the rest of the league buys what they want you to wear for the night. And then you wear it. And we go out. And so this is the first time in league history we've had a, a, a duo, a tandem. Uh, they're, called, they're called the but, <laughs> butt lords. <laughs> they made you do it. Um, yeah. Um, and so the outfit that they, they picked for us, I didn't know until I got there, was... Uh, a uh, bride and groom, um, and I was the bride, so I wore a wedding dress all night, and uh, it was low cut. I had had my uh, 
my chesticles out. Pictures? Yeah, um, dude. Where's why pictures? haven't I seen? Oh, you? I made sure that nothing went on my social media page. This was all their fucking <laughs> Snapchat and oh, shit. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to go freaking hunting um, for this. Yeah, McGee has it on there. Bro, I how think. do I get in this? Le- this league sounds legendary. Uh, I walked down the aisle and everything, and I had a. Brandon's girlfriend Abby made me a veil, and we went out to the mill, and then we went out to fucking the Muckleshoot Casino, and we were there for like three hours. And I'm just in a wedding wow. dress, walking around. Um, <laughs> met some good people, had a lot of conversation starters, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I met this old lady named Vivian who just followed me around eating popcorn. This old Asian lady just kept <laughs> kept listening to what my conversations were with other people, so she was she's a champ. Uh, but no, it was uh, I was a little really fucking nervous about what they're gonna have for me to wear, and uh, the wedding dress was obviously not the top of my list, but it could have been worse. I got to wear leggings underneath, so I wasn't too cold. It was it was good, and I got I got I looked I looked good, man. You probably learned a lot too, you know? huh? Like girls got to go through a lot to to be beautiful, and now now I feel like you have you know more of a well-rounded view on on the fashion it did change my perspective a little bit um and especially like in the breast area because the the wedding dress i was wearing had like a really like tight part right right there so it just pushed my titties up and like it i looked like i had b cups (laughs) from that dress so like those things are fucking deceiving i mean i probably already do have b cups but but they look like (laughs) big b's like b pluses oh my gosh um like that Jordan's hairy beak. My boobs got grabbed more than anything else. Usually I'm an ass guy. You, get, you know that, it. Zach. You know you know that, but oh, my boobs are on full display. So, wow. so that was my, my holiday break. But I'm uh, I'm excited to see what you guys do because you look fucking adorable. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, Yeah. So here's what happened was um, my mom got me a gift for for christmas and it is pajamas with alicia and my face on them from our engagement photos <laughs> and we put them on and i was thinking okay we're gonna record this podcast it's gonna be remote nobody's ever gonna see this and alicia's like taking her phone out and i'm like absolutely not nobody's ever gonna see this nobody can ever know and then as i'm like slipping it on i get a knock 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 at the door and i'm like the fuck? who's that and i'm like who is it and jr's like it's jr and i'm like fuck dude. i'm caught I'm caught. So he came in and saw my shit, and now I'm, yeah, I just got caught red-handed in some matching. <laughs> yeah, Alicia's wearing them too. Engagement photo PJs with uh, my fiance and myself on them. Why? So that's did you open them today, or you just decided Monday night? That's the night we're gonna wear those pajamas together. No, I opened them today. Like literally, I just. Oh, opened okay. Them. Alicia was like, "Oh, do you want to open the pajamas?" I'm like, "Oh, fuck, sure, dude." And now here we are. Now, now we're. Doing a hop here. So that was a gift from Michelle? Great. Dude, yeah. that's so Michelle. I fucking love that. That's amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> my, my mom's got jokes. Well, we'll get some pictures for the uh, for the listeners out there. Put this all over the world, all over the social media world, so everybody can see how cute fucking Zach looks in his little matching matching PJs. Yeah, there's a family mm. portrait already going out, probably. To all Christmas Zach's cards? And uh, Christmas is over, but just send out like January cards just to get those out there. <laughs> happy new year happy january <laughs> um awesome man well i'm glad you guys had a great holiday uh it's been off been a while since we've been on the mic together it's good to see your faces again miss you guys um and we are going to be talking uh watchmen this is a, a reaction episode watch hbo's uh watchmen series just concluded uh back on december 15th and um it's one of our favorite comics of all time it's, it was our, our first one of our first bigger episodes that we got to dive into and and kind of feel out the alan moore uh, fucked up world that he sees and and you really get to enjoy that and 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 the, the hbo series has been pretty well received so far um so i'm really excited to talk about it um jr you want to start it off with story time you know what do you got about the watchman t- story well um i think a really cool thing to start off with is realize that where this story go- comes from and stemming from because i think my first initial reaction was the movie Mm-hmm. So I was going to see like a lot of like, is this like, um, is it going to come from the movie? Uh, the show doesn't start off. It's very confusing in the beginning. Cause you're like, what is this about? Like there's has, it's a different, it's 2019. You've got, you know, cops with masks and then you've got, you know, Rorschach mask out there. They're the bad guys. So they're truly like, it, I felt like they were going to do like this whole, you know, different, um, story altogether, mm-hmm. but it, it looks like, um, it stemmed from the actual book, right? Mm-hmm. Not the movie, not the 2009 yeah. movie. It actually stemmed from the book. So there's a lot of references 
from the book, which I thought was really cool, which got me excited. Mm-hmm. But you really don't start to see that to about like episode three or four or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. But uh, basically, this is um, 2019, and uh, Regina King, who is the um, man. There's so many different characters. Like all I remember is Mirror Mirror Man or Mirror Man. Looking Glass. <laughs> Looking uh, Glass. Looking She's Glass. Sister Looking Knight. Glass. That's her her hero name. Sister, Sister yeah. Knight. Oh, that's like the Fallen Orders, the Knight Sisters from oh, Star Wars. It is. No. Oh, okay, just geek it up a little bit. Um, I haven't played it yet. So. But. So it kind of follows her and the history of her. So that it starts off really, 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 really intense mm-hmm. right away. Um, In a unique way. It, it definitely unique. Because I, I definitely just got to say, I was not expecting this show to go in this direction at all. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I, yeah. I actually don't think it's a bad thing at all. But it's just the way it started. The first, So the first episode opens up and it really kind of um, magnifies the race riots in Tulsa. Yeah. And when it does that, I'm almost thinking by the end of that episode that that's going to be like a one-off thing. Right. Because I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, they're using it to go in a different direction. But I don't feel like the show at that point is going to stay in that kind of, um, in that world. Like, right. like kind of a dissertation on, on race relations. Yeah. But it does. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, it just took a turn that I was not expecting. I don't know about you guys, but I was not expecting that. Yeah, no. it, it's definitely um, the show kind of does this. Um, it's a guy, like a mental game. It's definitely like the book because the book was like a mental game. You Ooh. read the book and there's like little slides of different stories throughout the book, kind of like a history in The Watchmen, right? You know, it kind of gave us the owl and his upbringing and some of these old stories. And I felt like they were doing that. Once you catch on, you're realizing, OK, they're following the model of the book mm-hmm. a little bit. And so you get these inserts of history. And they're they're black and white, which is kind of black and white in the book, which is mm. you know, so it kind of gave you a lot of those things. So, um, it's kind of a cool thing, right? I mean, that yeah. was kind of cool to see that way. You're kind of seeing the book kind of come to life in a very updated version of the story. The other thing that I feel like it kind of mirrors from the book is you know how in the book they have like the the main narrative with, um, you know, Rorschach and yeah. Doctor Manhattan and all of our main characters. But then they have kind of like this secondary ma- narrative that acts to mirror what's going on but maybe doesn't and it's kind of out of place but then it it really isn't and it's about the the pirate remember yep and, and, and that's a, a kind of a parallel narrative that yeah. runs with the, oh the comic book i feel like they do that too in the show but the parallel narrative is ozymandias yes in his in his little island with right. his little servants doing his little mm-hmm. random uh, experiments. Yeah. Did you know that was him the yeah, whole time, or did one. you wait for the, like the, the reveal? No, break it? no, I did not. Yeah, I did not I know who he was. I had. A, I kind of thought he was the leader of like the the white, like the. When I first saw him, I was like, "Oh, that's the that's the ultimate bad guy." Like I just felt like that's who. It yeah. Was. Like it's it's such a weird fucking like the fact like first off I didn't even know about the um the Black Wall Street massacre of 1921 that 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 Tulsa. Um, incident. I I even wasn't even aware of that. Like they did. I feel like they don't. Well, that's good. Talk about that like at all, like in school that's or anything. Good. Um, I, it's not good that you're not aware, but it's good that the show that you watched something and now. You oh, I mean, yeah, I thought it was just made up for the show until I looked into it and it was like, holy away. shit, that really fucking happened. Like it's it's a tragedy and and it's yeah, it's so overlooked. It's crazy. Um, but like Jr. was saying. There's nothing that makes sense for a long time in this show. Like they, they have like like senses in the middle. Like there's a ball of like like this makes sense, and then you're all scattered all around it. And then as the episodes go on, they kind of like seep towards like what actually makes sense in the yeah. storyline. And it's like, oh, yeah. like it, it it it's it's really really scattered and really fucking hard to keep up sometimes. But and, and a lot of times that would stray me from liking something, but but this like it made it so like each character was so interesting and each storyline was so unique and there was so much weird stuff, but it was like really well done that it actually like I still was intrigued. Like in Ozymandias, he's in this like castle with these clones of uh, this man and girl, like Adam and Eve almost, and they like are just everywhere and he's basically doing whatever he wants with them, killing them, using them for experiments, shooting them off in catapults and like they're disappearing like in the sky. Like it doesn't make any sense. And then you find out what happens later on. It's like, Oh, okay. That, that does make sense. But the fact that that shit was happening, it was still so cool and different that it didn't make me like lose track of the, of like lose interest at least. Um, I, I think that they really pushed the narrative forward with character reveals. And I think that they, they drop the audience in this world where, 
you don't really know what's happening and they just expect the viewer to kind of stay tuned to find out like that that kind of um drive to be like well who is this what is actually going on and the hope to to be rewarded with with an answer later on i feel like is what drives the narrative forward and and everybody wanting to stay tuned to watch the next episode but at the same time i i feel like a lot of people can be over that very fast like ah, i'm over it uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's going on i'm done but i mean i didn't do that i didn't do that I, and I know you guys didn't do that and i know that this has been a really well received episode and i think that the way that they kept viewership is by having characters that were just interesting enough without knowing anything about them that kept people coming like i thought that the grandfather character was fucking so so fucking mysterious like, who is this so guy? mysterious yeah <clears throat> <laughs> it was definitely um a kind of a uh like i said like a mind trip because they kind of trick you into things like the ozzy mandia stuff i mean you're like the way he set up that clone thing and the way that you thought it was clones when he lit that guy on fire you're like why is he killing this guy and, and then, then you they really, don't care the clones are just like oh okay yeah they feel the honored and he's like how does he <laughs> it's weird because you know because he can make them so he's like oh this is just like another can of soda i'm just gonna open it up you mm-hmm. know and throw it in the you know, it was kind of like a weird scenario. So I'm like, oh, no wonder he could doesn't care. And it's like the less and less you realize that he's got no like um, emotion towards them. It's because he can make them so mm-hmm. much. And that's that was like a trick. They like tricked you to like thinking like, oh, this is the end for this one major guy. Right. right. Like you thought that was a main character that just died. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I think they did that through all throughout the whole thing. And it like, again, it kind of uh homage back to the book you know what i mean it's like what the hell is just like what is going on and they're tricking you throughout this um and again with you know the grandfather that was a nice little like trying to follow that storyline in fact i really like don johnson character at the Mm -hmm. beginning because i he you know one it's don johnson it's you know Miami Vice. That's the police chief. The police yeah, chief. Yeah. yeah. And he, you know, and, you know, Miami Vice. I, I like that character too, actually. I did. And I didn't, until you realize what he actually was, yeah. right? And you're like, what the? And when he was actually one of the old, his father was one of the great grandfathers or whatever, was like, what, one of the founding massacre people? Seven Calvary. You know, for KKK. <laughs> or yeah. KKK, so it's like, same shit, whatever they were but back then. Like, they like trick you throughout the whole, whole series. And I definitely, the more and more I got involved in it, the more and more I wanted to watch, like, yeah. And these are our episodes. These are not like small ones you can consume, right? You know? So mm-hmm. you, you know, I'm watching it like while I'm washing dishes. You know, I'm on the toilet. You know, I'm trying to get <laughs> consume this whole thing as fast as Hopefully I can. Hopefully, not washing and dishes on the toilet, like the though, right? To like that wasn't that was two separate events. You weren't washing dishes on the toilet and watching this. No, I do it all at once. <laughs> Just do that's in your bathtub or some done. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. That's how I get. Stuff hey, done. kills time. Um. So Bro, can we talk about the most incredible retcon of all time? So, I have a question, <laughs> but I feel like Jordan, you're about to go somewhere. So do you want to go? Oh, there? I was just going to say, before we get too deep into the weeds of like what we liked most and everything, I feel like JR, could you just give like a summarized plot of what the story is for the, for the yeah, series? Yeah. So uh, like I was saying, it's like a, uh, it's a continuation. I think everybody knows of the Watchmen book. So mm-hmm. you should really go read it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Watchmen from Alan Moore. Uh, even though he doesn't put his name on this at anything media. He actually hates the fact that yeah. this even happened. Yep. <laughs> um, I think it, they did a, a great job in, in following that storyline. And it fo- like I said, it follows uh, – it does follow separate characters, but Regina King's character, the Night Sister. Sister Knight. Uh, Sister yeah. Knight. Sister Knight. Damn fucking Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> follows her and kind of her – where she came from, how, why she's doing the things she's doing, and then um, I, obviously the the hero in the story. I felt she was the hero. She she's is, the protagonist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she's the main main character. Yep. And there's this um, there's this like again big conspiracy going on, right? You got that same concept of of there's a bad guy out there. Who's the bad guy? And they're trying to figure that out. And there's th- these like conspiracies going on with. Um, I think people should realize that Warshak is is like um like multiplied as as a figure in this right i hate that they literally made him a cult yeah but because but, yeah they, they they made him a cult but like the, the cult's like seventh cavalry like this huge white supremacist group and i don't feel yeah, like they, rorschach was a white supremacist by any means so i just 
It's confusing to me. I don't think he was, but I think that they used Rorschach as a as like their kind of uh, mascot because Rorschach dealt in these black and white um, morals, and they believe that they are dealing in black and white morality as well. As as in, um, you know, my side's right, your side's wrong, and there is no middle ground, and there is no kind of um, table in which we can negotiate. And I think that's kind of why they, they took that character. And honestly, in hindsight, that's pretty fucked up. And it's fucked up because it, I, I love Rorschach, and I, and, I, and I thought his black and white morality was actually really cool. But this show, one of the things it did is it showed me how easily that morality that I once defended in so many circles can just so easily be flipped upside down and become the most evil thing yeah. ever. And um, it really makes me regret a lot of arguments <laughs> and, and, in my life to Patrick Rorschach because I've been in a, a, a weird amount of them. Um, well, you're, you're Zach the Black Rorschach, cause, so because they have a point. I mean, I apologize for not yeah, I'm Zach the Black. I apologize for not introducing you. Is that real weird about it? Yeah, because <laughs> they have a point. It's very like that black and white morality. It, it can be this just warrior, but if you're gonna say black and white with no middle ground and no table to negotiate, it can be so easily turned into this tyrannical evil view. So yeah, but the one thing that Rorschach had that I made that. Her made that work because he had morals to a certain extent like he had the moral compass yeah but they were his but they were his and it was either you agreed with him or you didn't and it just so happened that a lot of us agreed with what he did but imagine if we didn't well i mean i feel like you can't just say morals like these are my morals those are your morals like morals are morals morals are like what's what's the greater good or what's like what's the right Well, he had a, a warped moral sense though like his spectrum was completely like warped compared to like let's well, say it was, Owlman it was or whatever. dark like, it was like whatever Ozymane. it takes but the the end goal like he had the right the right like like when ozimanius is gonna do the whole thing he was like no i'm not doing this and like he, he knew he was gonna go down and he still just stood up to it because right. he knew it was right like but jordan that's what i'm saying he had a set he had a moral code and he and it was black or white it was either you were within that moral code and you were correct or you were out of it and you were wrong and there was no in between and it just so happens that you and I, at the end, happened to fall on the side where we agreed with what he did. But imagine if you still had that same um, very kind of strict structure of morality, except your right was something that we felt w was wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying is that if you take that same structure of morals, but just slightly shift the morals and make it something that we would call evil, but we still have this ideology of, I'm right, you're wrong, then it becomes a very, very evil thing. But I feel like those aren't but morals then. Powerful. If, they're, if they're evil, they're not morals. The, well, that's their moral. I, I do see what Zach's saying here. It's like blind faith. Like, they have blind faith that what they're doing so, is right. And so, so about, a little bit with, like, Rorschach. I feel like we're going to get super I feel like we're going off track. But I just, I feel like morals relate to right a now. good, like, a good, uh, like, a moral compass. Is like, but that's just your own morality. So let me, let, so let's, let's take a real world example. We have a suicide bomber, right, that, that is fighting for ISIS. That person, when he jumps into a crowd and blows the bomb, does not believe that what he's doing is evil. He believes that he is doing this for God, for, like, his people, for, for, to go to heaven, and it's, like, the highest just you can ever yeah. do. But you and I and JR would look at that dude and be like, you're fucking terrible. Like, you killed all these innocent people. But it, you can't say that because we feel so, some way and this other person feels a different way, ours is morals and theirs is evil. It's all just perspective. It's just whatever they, whatever they feel is right. Because of <clears throat> that's their morality. Yeah. Well, we, we are right and they're wrong, though. So that's, that's, that's all that needs to be said with that. So. <laughs> that's true. So we can, <laughs> well, yeah, we can move on from it's that. Terrible. <laughs> uh, but that's, isn't that crazy to think? Like, they believe that they're right in that right, moment. Right, right. No, I, it makes sense. It's just, yeah. Okay, so moral code isn't necessarily the right, like, the, the right decision. It's just whatever you think is right. Um, okay, I'm learning, I'm learning all Subjective. sorts of stuff today. All right, so yeah, so there's a 7th Calvary. Um, they are up to something. Um, and they're kind of a cult, and they take have taken the Rorschach kind of persona as their their mascot. Lol, kind of. Um, then yeah. what, Jr. Um, and then the the police force is, um, I guess they're perse persecuted at some point because they wear masks, and that's where the mask. Uh, instead of being vigilantes in Tulsa, they're actually cops. Yeah. 
So what happens is the Seventh Cavalry ends up finding out where the cops live, and then attack, like uh, organizing a coordinated attack against them and killing a bunch of the cops, and then um, kind of threatening them, like we know who you are, we know who your family is, we know where you live, and this will you know continue if you continue standing in our way, whatever, whatever. So they're um, the, the Tulsa police force lost a bunch of cops. They all resigned. They didn't want anything to do with that. And then the solution was, well, if the cops wear masks, then nobody will know who the cops are and they'll be safe. So that's how the masks came about. Mm-hmm. So pretty much cops are superheroes. <laughs> Almost. <clears throat> in Tulsa. In Tulsa, in Tulsa yeah. yeah. Yeah, only in Tulsa. Yeah. And that yeah. was crazy. There was a lot of cool things that I thought were, I mean, that was unique. Um I mean, just like, I mean, it, it, the whole thing has a, a racial undertone to, like, everything that happens in the storyline. But the fact that, like, with all the recent, like, the stigma that the police have in, in today's society and, like, the Black Lives Matter movement and all the, you know, the anti-cop kind of persona, in this, it's the white supremacists that are anti-cop. And it's, like, the cops are wearing masks to protect themselves. And, and, and they have to go through all this shit with, like... They have to have a, a request to activate their gun before they can use it. Like they have to get it like coded yeah. down. Like there's just so much <laughs> different shit that happened, and like t- to see how we see cops in today's society, how they see cops in this, and it's like it's completely different, but almost similar in certain weird, weird ways and weird aspects. It's just it's crazy. It's just so fucking out there, but so grounded at the same time. I loved it. I loved it. What else? So we have we have the cops. We have Regina um, King, who is Ibar. Angela Ibar is our character named Sister Knight. So she's kind of she's a a retired cop, but she is still a vigilante that fights for the police force. She's a mask. Yeah, she's a mask cop. So they're they're different than the regular cops um, because they get to kind of go behind the scenes kind of situation and and f people up. You know, like uh, uh, glass. Looking glass. Looking glass. I mean, the way he interrogates, that was weird, right? I yeah. mean, hip, hypnosis almost, like uh, subliminal messaging and mm-hmm. pulling out the the uh, the things. And then, obviously, they beat them kind of thing. So, um, you got that. And then you got a, an undertone master plot, plot going on. You got a, like, something big is happening. And it's like end of the world kind of scenario, you know? So they do kind of, like I say, they follow that watchman. Yep, just like the book. Just like the book, you know, and um, they bring in a lot of, of old characters, which I was very surprised because I'm like thinking tw- 2019, you know, I'm like, well, who can they bring back, you know? But they brought back uh, Silk Spectre. She's an FBI Dude, agent. Mm-hmm. A, she's uh, a, a task force for vigilant. Yeah. And she don't give a shit about mm-hmm. nothing. She hunts heroes uh, now. She's fucking... Yeah, what's crazy is that she hunts you. Yeah, yeah she goes after them. Um, you like you said, you talk about um, Jeremy Irons' character, which is uh, Osman Dito. You know that worked in there somehow. Um, and you got Doctor Manhattan, which was insane, Dude. right? Mm-hmm. Like that whole bringing him to life was like sick. And um, so you've got this. That's kind of the plot of Bro, it. Are you not going to mention the? In most incredible retcon of all time. Well, I really want you guys to do it, but I, I just kind of wanted to lay out. Oh, I thought whole... you forgot. I'm like, no, what? no I didn't are forget one. Talking about that? I did not forget one like minute of that are you, show. Are you talking Hood of Justice? Who, do you, who are you referring to? Okay. Yeah, okay. I just want to make I sure. Hood of Justice. Pitch. What? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and obviously, there's they give the since Zach just couldn't wait. <laughs> he's like so excited. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, if we're gonna mention the characters, that yes. They bring back. And so, um, Hooded Justice is in there, and they give an explanation for who he is, which is completely different than uh, the book kind of hints at. They kind of took it on their own, which I was very impressed. I thought with. they did a really good job. I, with that, yeah, yeah. I was. Imp- I I honestly feel like so in Hooded Justice. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't. I, obviously, I've read the book multiple times, but I didn't reread it for this show. Yeah. Hooded Justice is the one that doesn't speak, correct? Uh, he speaks, but he's the one that they have no clue who he is. Who he is? Okay, right. Okay, yes. so there's a so there's so the the writers of the show were like, wait a minute, guys, we have an opportunity here. Yeah, we have a fucking opportunity here. Yeah, and boy, did they take that opportunity. Every every little wow. bit of creativity where they like w- they went on their own um, was fantastic. And Damon Lindelof is the um, the screenwriter for this and the showrunner, and he was also screen uh, co wrote and showrunner for Lost. Um, in which it, oh that's never tr- never watched oh those. my god I've heard uh, it's an incredible incredible show yeah. um 
I have a lot of similarities to Lost, but some of that I'll get to later. But um, he also wrote Prometheus, and and he also did uh, The Leftovers, which I haven't watched, but it's gotten really really good uh, reviews. And and one thing he's really good at is creating characters after a traumatic event, and like just like showing their their reacclimation into society. Um, that's like kind of what Lost was is after the trauma, how they all like create a society together and how they reacclimate themselves. And uh, same with Leftovers. And, and, and this was very similar to that. And he's just such a good, I don't know, he, he finds vulnerabilities in invulnerable people. He finds vulnerabilities in Dr. Manhattan in this show. Like you you see him like have yeah. feelings and shit. Like it's just, I don't know, he, he did such a good job. Um, and then he, yeah, and then he yeah. creates hooded justice and it's like, Oh my God, that's such an incredible background. And just, just so before we get into the, what we love, just to finish off kind of the synopsis, this, this under, well, like under fucking underground society. That's like the big thing is the big reveal, uh, spoilers across the board. So don't listen if you don't want to know what happens, but basically, uh, this tri- trillionaire lady true, um, who is an offspring of Osmandius which is was a crazy twist. And the weirdest yeah, way. Yeah, one of his one of his <laughs> one of his housekeepers or one of the help basically took he had like semen stored in it in his house and like took one of it and squirted it up her fucking vajay when he wasn't aware of it and filled it with uh hand lotion so he didn't know and then gave birth to his daughter so she had all of his powers like she was just as smart as him if not smarter. And uh she creates this device to basically take Dr. Manhattan's power from him, destroy him and then give her the power so she could become um, all powerful, and yeah. she's like the leader of this seven, well, one of the leaders of Seven Cavalry. There's so many fucking leaders with the yeah. senator and everything. But anyways, that's kind of the whole story of what's going on. Um, Hello, listeners. It's your friendly host Jordan. Just checking in. Uh, let you know that this episode of Hop Heroes is brought to you by RS Figures. Um, RS Figures is a partner of ours that is um, a pewter statue company. Um, they are online. You can find them on. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube, um, where they put big reveals on of their new statues. They're a great store. Um, if you order anything from them, be sure to put in the code Hop Heroes, and you'll get free shipping on any purchase over fifty dollars. And most of these uh, pewter statues are going to be amazing and in that price range anyway. So basically free shipping if you put in the Hop Heroes code. Um, they are dedicated to bringing the very best of Marvel, DC Comics, Disney, and Star Wars figures to your doorstep and if you follow them on facebook and share their um, new products you will be put in the running for a free giveaway so awesome opportunity such great stuff they have this new magneto figurine that is freaking awesome and is actually about to win an award possibly um so go up there and vote as well um to make sure that they win that and they also have this new wolverine that's just out of this world so please be sure to check out rs figures um check them out on social media check them out on youtube for the big reveals and thank you so much for listening back to the episode in this a little bit it, it, anybody who's read and this is a big time spoiler too is that they knew exactly what Osmandito did all these characters Osmandito. except for maybe Regina King knew uh, what what he did and because they had the book so basically at the end of what uh, Watchmen you see uh, uh, Rorschach's diary Rorschach's journal, yeah. being discovered and so somehow all that got passed down and now everybody knows exactly what happened with the squids, mm-hmm. which is, you know, a setup to stop world, you know, that whole switch, you know, clip thing with the, yeah. yeah. you know what I'm talking about. And that, that <laughs> event with the, with the squid, when it went back to uh, looking glasses origin, cause every, ep- they have origin episodes, like Lori Blake had her own episode, which is pro- one, pro- are yeah. my favorite? She was a fucking savage when she's like calling Dr. Manhattan and leaving the met, like the joke and like talks about, what happens when God dies? Well, he goes to hell or something like that. Like, it's just fucking yeah. amazing. <laughs> and then uh, Looking Glasses episode is when he's uh, he's like the super religious like guy trying to – it's like the night of the apocalypse and he's trying to uh, convert a bunch of people at the carnival into his, his religion. Which I don't even know if it specified what he was. But uh, this girl basically – Like a Mormon or something. It was Mormon. similar to – it looked Mormon. They got – they all came on – they're like suits came off a bus and they all went to this carnival to convert. And like this girl – Kind of takes her and takes him into a fun house, convinces him that she wants to fuck him, gets him naked, and then leaves. And then he like fucking. <laughs> then the the squid hits right when that happened. He's butt naked in, in a fun. Yeah, nineteen eighty five. Yeah, right? eighty four, eighty five. Yeah. So uh, eighty four, maybe eighty five. But, but yeah, that's when the event. And happened. he walks out, and there's just 
corpses everywhere and it's like it's a psychic event too like people that were there have psychic like nightmares and terrors and shit from it and he's just and the, I just love that part because it zooms out from the fun house all these dead bodies and he's just like screaming and like the music like this slow like horror synth build like uh, oh man this this show goes and he's just butt ass naked like walking out there trying to figure out yeah what's going on. dude it just it has so many different styles in one sh- in one s- like season like it went from like kind of like crime drama to like almost like horror sci-fi like it, it, it dabbles with both and like it's and like mystery thriller like i don't know it just i i would argue that it ultimately becomes a love story and that at the end yeah it has like it has literally everything in it it's like, I remember watching this with Alicia, and at the end, she was literally in tears, like, crying. And she was just like, oh, my God, it's been a love story this entire time. <laughs> oh, no. She's crying about it. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> Never thought I'd see her crying over a Watchmen show. But here we are. <laughs> yeah, dude. And that's that's one thing, too. Because one of my questions was, do you have to know Watchmen to enjoy this show? And Sammy doesn't know Watchmen, and she enjoyed the show thoroughly. Um, so I think that, like you were saying, it does help because you have you – get... But she knows Watchmen, right? I mean, she no, she it? hasn't read it or anything. She's seen the movie? No, I don't think she's seen the movie. Oh, well, yeah, but I don't think I don't think so. I think that it with anything it helps. I mean, if you have a background with the characters, all the Easter and eggs, like, you're like, oh, yeah, of course, uh, yeah, it makes but, it that much better. Yeah. Right? And like, yeah. there's been like big moments for me when I was like, oh my god, no fucking way, that's hooded justice. <laughs> like, and then my mind is blown. We're like, oh, that's Ozzy man. Yeah. It's like, oh, like I feel like. To not know those characters when those moments hit, it just passes right by you. Yeah. And so I think that you probably have like I'm sure you still enjoy it, but just differently. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's that's how good it is. Like it's its own standalone, but if you connect it to the Watchmen, like if you're able to, it's even better. Yeah. It's it's literally just I think the best way to watch it is to read the book first. Yeah. Yeah. That's a recommendation yeah. for sure. And you know you don't need to see the movie. Uh, to enjoy this, but yeah, you could totally skip the movie. Yeah, yeah the, movie the movie will just throw Zach's it seen it about a hundred times for some reason, but he, I don't know why he keeps watching it. But uh, the comic, dude, it's so good, and it it directly it's is this is just thirty years after the comic ends, and like this is the world that that he for like Linda 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 Love foresaw, and it's a fucking world that I never want to be a part of, but also it's very intriguing, and I can't stop watching it and all this shit that's going on. So. Oh, very, very cool. Okay, so uh, JR, who was your favorite character? Who stuck with you? Ooh, that's so tough, man. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Doctor Manhattan. Totally tricked mm, me. All right, on that. Totally. Did you like, have any idea? I had no idea. Dude, I'm like, w- yeah. What the fuck is going on here? And so when she's like, "Baby, it's time." We knew this time was coming. I was like, "What the heck?" And then she just beats his head. Yeah. In. Like dude. you could see it coming. It's POV at that time, too. You're like getting hints. And then you're like, "What the heck?" Like this guy who I thought was a background character the whole time was like the most supreme person ever to exist, living a dad life. Dude, He's fuck yeah. Yeah. A buff dad, but you know he was ripped like no. Nobody's dude, business, and he was fucking packing like, heat, the- dude. When he was naked, yeah, guy was was well <laughs> I off. Saw that too, Jesus I was, Christ, I man! Don't know. Is that, that a prosthetic? A Is that shit there. real? Good <laughs> lord! <laughs> like I've heard of CGI, but that would have been the whole budget. I feel like just to fucking <laughs> elongate that man's schlong. It was. You're you're right. They I know they digitally enhanced um the Doctor Manhattan in, in the movie. I I suspect they did not need to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they did, bro. Like Jesus. that guy's doing just no fine. Required. He is doing just okay. fine. Okay. No, we're gonna park um, on this for about ten more minutes. I, I so love, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm just gonna keep no. going. It's fucking. Um, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I was just hats okay. off. Okay. Um, I just I love the way they they brought him to life in the show. You know, in Vietnam and how Regina got. I just love saying Regina King for some reason. I just love her as an actor. You know, mm-hmm. she's such a great actor. But um, or actress, whatever you want to say. That's uh, Sister Knight. Yeah, Sister Knight. Dude, there has been multiple moments in the show when I kind of would stop and turn to Alicia and be like, "She's gonna win so many awards." Yeah, like she is just so believable yeah. in, in such an unbelievable world and you're just like jesus dude she's killing this yeah, yeah dude yeah. she's badass like she like takes over you know the comedian and she could take you know take on the owl like i felt like she could all those three characters who could fight like she had that all in her yeah with the anger with yeah. the emotion and the deepest secret 
right? right. The deepest secret right. she held forever. Yeah. Well, she didn't know one the of those secrets about those either, characters too. too. Is that especially the comedian? I feel like I don't know if I could watch an entire movie with the comedian as the protagonist because I think it would end up being very cheesy and stupid. Because mm. I think the comedian is very one dimensional, yeah. and he's cool in the scenes he's in in the yeah. in the book and the show and yeah. the movie, but he can't last. Right. But she has that same dimension, but yeah. she's so much deeper than that. She yeah. has so much more going on, and she just easily can take you through a 10, 10 episode, one hour each yeah. long season yeah. without even fucking blinking. Yeah. Cause she just has that much story to tell, and that's impressive. I agree, yeah. yeah. She's a dope actress, too. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite. I I thought it was very intricate. I thought it was very like a mesh web that got revealed. I thought um, the fact that uh, I love his tone when he changes from the the normal guy to like Doctor Manhattan. His tone was so soothing. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm listening to it on my my headphones a lot of the time, so I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this. He turns into this like you know very like non emotional person, and um, so yeah, that's my favorite. The Doctor Manhattan character in this Fair. one can I, can I say why i liked that dr manhattan character yep so while we were watching this once dr manhattan became revealed as dr manhattan the thing is is that even when he was in his like god form you could still tell that he was black mm. like he was a black dude i like, kept yeah yeah the way he, the way he looked i mean it was clear that he was a black dude she, he like kept his face exactly. she even mentions that yeah she mentions it yeah exactly yeah. and i have never in my life ever seen a character that's like all powerful as a black person uh-huh. in, in like major motion picture yeah. like can you think of it like think of a character morgan F- that's a morgan freeman was god and bruce god. almighty who morgan freeman oh morgan freeman and bruce almighty He's god <laughs> that's true but i feel like that the, the all powerful <laughs> character head, that was actually jim carrey <laughs> not morgan freeman <laughs> Uh, that's a le- good example. Jordan. I mean, Black Panther, I guess, <laughs> but that's not all powerful. It's just a superhero. Black Panther is pretty recent, but he's also not that on me. Like the he's super still a side character the compared Thor, to yeah. like the the like. I, I don't see know. what you're saying. I just feel like that was like I was. I remember pulling away from that and being like, "Damn, I've literally never seen that before." Yeah, that's I like can't a think really of a big fucking one cool thing to see. Yeah, and then um, I also didn't expect it. Yeah, I, yeah, that that, so, that twist. I love this egg egg analogy too. I got you know the egg, you know and the chicken, oh, yeah. and then the egg. Yeah, and that was such a big deal at the end too for her when you know he's like, you can put, can you put all your power in this one egg? I loved it. I loved it. And then at the end, I'm like, is she gonna do it? I have a take on that, but I totally enjoyed the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So let's hear your take because I'm curious. Well, well, wait, well wait, who's your who's there. your character? Who's we your got character? we got to go through favorite character. Okay, let's go. Sorry, there's so much to this thing. It's I like know. intense. I know. So. Z, who's your favorite? All right, Jordan, you want to oh, go? I'll go. Okay. My favorite was Lori. Um, I just, I really liked her fucking. Is that Silk Spectre? Yeah. Silk Spectre, I really yeah. liked her viewpoint. She was, she was the Rorschach of the, of the series, I think. She just was, she was black and white. She didn't give a fuck. You think she was the Rorschach, dude? Uh, I think Looking Glass was the Rorschach for sure. Looking Glass was scared, man. And he was like worried and nervous and like he was not i don't know she, he didn't have the edge i feel like Lori was all edge i mean she didn't have like this huge philosophy or this huge viewpoint like rorschach did i just meant like uh she got shit done and she wasn't gonna let like like at the funeral for the police chief when like the yeah, fucking terrorist true. came in and he was like this is connected to my heart she's capped him right in the head before he could do like she doesn't hesitate yeah. and i just really like how the whole everything that she went through from the comic book 30 years later, this is who she is now. Like you can, it, it works. Like it just like, she's so removed and so heartbroken and so angry and basically takes out her anger on what she used to believe in and the people that follow that vigilante path. And I don't know. And she, and she kind of finds herself and finds a little bit of heart later on, but um, really connects with um, sister Knight. But I just, I just loved her episode with the joke and her connection to Dr. Manhattan. And then you find who Dr. Manhattan is. And just like the car falls out of the sky and she just starts laughing. Like she's like, she's just fucking, this is sure. Of course that happened. <laughs> um, yeah. It's hard. There's a lot of really cool characters in this. Um, obviously sister Knight is dope. Um, I just, I really, the whole, the bank heist scene that was fucking, that was trippy. You thought that she was robbing the bank. That was and insane. It was yeah. a setup. I don't know. I just really, I really liked how they used her and, and her, uh, her style. So that was my girl. Z. Um, 
I mean, I, I agree with all of you guys. I feel like both those characters were sick. Um, there's a lot of characters that I feel like I can mention here. I think honorable mention would be Looking Glass. I feel like you guys are, like, low-key hating on Looking Glass, and I don't really know why. I feel like he was badass. Oh, I like him. He's just um, soft. Although he did have fear, <laughs> but he, like, managed it well. He had his propylene lining in his hat and shit, <laughs> yeah. and, like, you know. His signs helmet. And, like, think about his whole world shifted when he realized that his entire life is based off of a fucking lie yeah like that's like crazy yeah um but anyway I, i'm gonna say hooded justice because that retcon was just masterful yeah masterfully done the character arc the the reason why how his costume became what it was i remember watching the movie and reading the book and being yeah. like why would he choose that as a costume? yeah where'd right. the noose that's come from goddamn <clears throat> costume right yeah he's got a noose around it's like this just trash yeah and then i watch this and i'm just like oh it's fucking perfect yeah. yeah like it's just it's just like i don't know it doesn't get any better with the white makeup and then how his whole life falls apart around him but he yeah. continues with the cause yeah and it's just one of those stories I'm not ever really going to forget. And then on top of that, I want to give another shout out to Sister Knight because I think that there's this underlying theme in this show and it's generational trauma. Right. And I think that like that's a thing that it starts to explore. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really fucking interesting because like your grandfather who you never knew went through this shit and then all of a sudden through these magic pills you get his memories. But now you're just as traumatized as he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like now and you were already fucked up, but but you're taking on that burden yeah and and even without having those pills you became sister knight yeah do you know what i mean i do like yeah that's a lot to unpack there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. extreme and i i love the fact that you, you got to see lewis gossip jr again i mean from from the eagle you know fighter pilot movies and mm -hmm. like from the 80s and i'm like i didn't even think that dude was still alive but he looked pretty good who was yeah. he for how old he was lewis gossip jr yeah uh 80s 90s actor uh um, who is he in the show the officer and a gentleman he's like the 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 like what the the drill sergeant you, know, you guys ever see officer and a gentleman mm. who's he in the in the, the watchman he is the grandfather oh hooded. gotcha okay yeah okay yeah i didn't know the actor's he's name he's one of these old time great actors from the 80s and and early 90s and i had not seen him if i don't know when the last time great it was like a, a boxing movie maybe that came out in the 90s but it was great to see him it's good to see these actors like come around mm -hmm. like even with um laurel blake laura breaker blake Lori, right? yeah uh, S silver specter she she uh she's another actress that kind of was like sprinkled in tv shows you know mm. like i'm gonna say frazier because i love frazier <laughs> of course you're gonna say she's frazier. on frazier she's, she's in every Monk. episode yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah. Fraser is amazing. <laughs> he, he just listens and you just fall in love with him. But anyways, <laughs> down um, that <laughs> she, it's good to see these actors like Regina King and all these people that are amazing actors and they kind of just sprinkled them in there. Like none was more overpowering than the other. You know? I agree with that. And I think that yeah. that's actually an, an interesting kind of take because when, when we're talking about all these characters, you would think that it would become one of their shows. Yeah. Especially, especially with sister Knight. Yeah. Um, but it really doesn't become that. No, it's 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 weirdly. Equal. It's the yeah. exact. And I don't really know how they accomplished that. It's the exact that. same way they did Lost, dude. Like Jerry, you've seen Lost. Like the main guy you think is going to be Jack. I've seen pieces of Lost. Uh, yeah, well, I've seen, I do know what you're. I've seen about Lost that. twice, yeah. and Jack's like the main guy. He's like the doctor, and he's like the leader. But like, really, it's everybody's story. Like everybody is just as equal from a yeah. a story arc standpoint and narrative. Like it's it's just. It's Lindelof. He's he's a fucking G when it comes to that. I don't know. I got a lot of respect Damn. for the guy. It's impressive how he does that. Yeah. Um, anything you guys want to say about the story before we go into Craft or Trash? Any, any last points? Um, I I don't have anything. I mean, there's some really cool, you know, uh, Easter eggs. So I really, you know, there's some things that like threw me off and that, that I love. Like I said, the squid stuff and the fact how Osmandito like still trick people to this day yeah he's just continually doing it to yeah. keep the peace yeah. he's just like <laughs> Rando, <laughs> Rando like, throws a little he has it on automatic you know it's yeah. just like it's on autopilot and yeah the people um and uh yeah i mean that stuff like that i i i think i enjoyed about 
the whole show about you know those little things just because from a comic book perspective yeah. one of the greatest comic books ever so. yeah. and I will say even yeah. like uh, Adrian Veidt and Lady True didn't get any love from our in our character appreciation but they both fucking killed it too like I mean it's just yeah Lady True did a good job everybody man yep so did Ozzy man alright yep. well let's go let's go craft your trash um, wait I want to say one thing about the oh, story okay first. my bad um so I mean this can actually be craft craft or trash for me. Uh I think it's craft. I think it's amazing. Um and I think that uh this story to me did like something I I didn't expect but I was pleasantly surprised with and it and it took this idea of of the Tulsa race riots and and race relations and then brought in superpowers and then brought in um like white supremacy and made it all try to make sense and and i think it just did it really masterfully and i think that there's times in the show where i'm like i don't think i've seen that before i mean if you notice the the main protagonist is a female like a black female that's pretty rare Mm -hmm. like you don't see that very often for sure the the ultimate being is a black male that's super rare too um and so i think it does a lot for diversity and i just you know just got to shout that out i think that's fucking dope i mean absolutely it definitely doesn't travel down the path most traveled in that sense and so and it did it so well to it wasn't like it was dominating the plot but not in a way where it was like overly political to the point where it was all politics like it was just such a cool story that was involved with that theme like i don't know it was just so so well executed but having said that i i definitely think that there were holes like i'm not gonna say that it was it was absolutely perfect Mm -hmm. Um, there was a couple things, especially towards the very, very end, like oh, the very man. last episode, yeah. where I was just kind of left scratching my head, like, what does that mean? We don't really need to go into them, but you know, I'd give it a, I'd give it a eight point five. Eight point five. It's very, very good, but it doesn't, it's doesn't get away with like the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. But it's up there. I mean, it's fucking great. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, I'll go next. Uh. I gave it a nine and for a lot of the same reasons, I think that I'm I'm not a big, um, like I don't like watching too much, um, political, you know, nonsense when it comes to a lot of things in society. Um, just because I like to live in the, in the clouds a little bit and that kind of stuff. This is more fun. But don't you feel like you should know shit like the Tulsa race? Oh, I should. Aren't you happy that you know? about? No, I am for sure. And, and, and I, if I could, if I could get educational knowledge in this format, I would be so much more intelligent and that would be fucking so much more enjoy history. (laughs) Like this is the best history story of my fucking life. I loved it. Like I wish everything was, 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 uh, educated this way. Um, but it just, it, it did, it, I, I guess if you look at the Watchmen graphic novel, it did have some political, um, statements in there, but Ultimately, like this, this was even more so. But did it though? What What were the political statements in the Watchmen? Um, I I don't remember it being like this. I just think it was the whole like Rorschach's philosophy and and like I, I guess I don't know if it's political. Maybe it's just like they had the Cold War. Uh, oh, the Cold War. There was the yeah, the was the, uh, the nuclear warfare. I mean, I don't know. I, maybe not political is the right word, but maybe it's just a uh, controversial. Uh, they're like religion and shit like that. Communism. Um, Commun- I think it it plays on what. The time period was. I think Alan Moore played on the Cold War yeah, when he probably wrote that. The, com- and the Red Scare. Exactly. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, this yeah. this one is it's obviously playing on what we thought is is race is not actually cleared up like it should be, right? Yeah. So right. I think That's there true. is a little bit of that underlying political um, yeah. uh, message in there. Because during the Cold War, people would be would be accused as being communist, and yeah, they would actors, be producers, fucking, like their life would be wrecked. He's a communist. Like the fucking like, Salem witch know. trials, just <laughs> accuse yeah, and burn. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess basically what I'm saying is it, it just did such a good job of keeping it unique and fresh and interesting while also informative and educational and so fucking, so fucking well done from the character development, which is always things to me. Um, but I agree with Zach. I think the ending flopped and it's not surprising because I wouldn't say flopped. Uh, I thought the I thought the ending ruined it for me. Uh, not ruined it for me, but it dropped. Definitely lost some points. And and lost had the same thing. I mean, lost the lost ending. Everybody's like, really. Um, and this ending was. But you gave it a nine, huh? I know it would have been. A, gave it a nine. I'm saying the only things that really held it back were the ending, and um, I also thought the pacing um, slowed a little bit during the nostalgia part. I mean, there was so much good information in there, but it was all just like. There's two straight episodes of just uh, Sister Knight's like history, and it seemed like that was like ninety percent of the, the episode, and and it was necessary information. It was really good information. Just I wish they could have yeah, broke it up a little bit. Um, 
But yeah, that's that's the only reason. I, I still think it was one of the best shows I've seen. And uh, I think that some of the episodes in there are probably some of the best episodes of any series. Um, just so fun. Like the, the Lori Blake, the Looking Glass episodes are my favorites too. Um, when you finally find out what the Senator's doing. And like I think that's the Looking Glass episode where he goes into that little hideout and sees him teleport shit and everything. Like Just so cool. So fucking cool. Yeah. And then the whole fucking Dr. Mm-hmm. Manhattan storyline broke my goddamn heart. And that pissed me off too. <laughs> so the ending... It flopped because a couple of reasons. It, it, it ended up actually kind of being an emotional. Yeah, dude. Like, you, like there ended up being emotional moments. You, get, you connect to Doctor Manhattan and you feel for him, and he he's vulnerable, and and he didn't have to fucking die. Uh, I think Doctor Manhattan becomes a um, a Jesus Christ figure. Uh, I just I know I know that I think it's for it's for uh, Sister Knight in the end, like the reasoning and everything. But like I just like he knows that he has to die. It's like Obi Wan, so she can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's 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 a sacrifice. But I fucking it's, hate it's that. The, the, the sacrifice and then the whole thing with the squid, like that just didn't make sense. Like uh, it didn't like it it like killed Lady True, but all, but then like Sister Knight's running with a fucking garage lid over her head and it's just like bouncing off. Like, yeah, though that's what that is the thing. <laughs> that didn't that make made any me fucking me. sense to me. But that is uh, the thing that made me the <laughs> But other than that, I think the show was damn near perfect, so that's why I gave it a nine. JR. Uh I'm gonna give it a, a nine. Um, but How I don't. Did I get the lowest score. I don't Jesus. really have any like big time issues with it. I do. I do see what you're saying about the squid thing. It did occur to me. I'm like thinking. I'm like, couldn't that? Squid? She has a suitcase. Yeah, I'm like that should go it's right like going through, through that. People's schools, and she has a suitcase. Yeah, and that yeah, huge so, I mean, I building that Lady True's in just um, right through. But I was so emotionally involved with the Doctor Manhattan thing. I think I just kind of was like, oh, that's weird, and then moved on. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was very, very. Um, Okay to me, but I think for TV shows, as we go, I think this is probably one of the best TV shows we've we've done. Oh, oh sure. yeah. Uh, I mean, some of the other ones, we we for me, I felt like we were just pulling teeth to get through it, and this one, I I went through nine episodes. Yeah. Right. Nine. Yeah. That's nine hours of TV. I whisked through within a week and a half of just like having a hard time putting it down. Um. And they did such a good job to to pay tribute, even though Alan Moore did not like it or whatever his issue is. <laughs> he's too artistic for this world, that guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I really wonder though, because I feel like how could you not like? I don't know, but it like, it totally it totally did a good job. He just doesn't of, like the like, he's the bitter book, the, about them how they got the rights. He's bitter. Yeah. <laughs> he's a bitter dude. If, they, if somebody took your baby and started like, raping it in front of you, like he would be. <laughs> I mean, that's a little extreme. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know though. I mean, I felt like they did a like. I don't they, think they did that though. I feel like they did. I did. They felt like with the movie, not with this, that, but, not but with, with the this. movie. They took his baby and made probably the best TV show like that's ever been. But made, at this maybe. point, he's so what, like, bitter about it. We're putting this in on the Mount Rushmore. Like, what other TV shows are this good? Game of Thrones maybe this is oh, but that's like eight seasons of that like you have to this is like, ha- i don't even know any other show that we can maybe breaking bad like this is the legendary status we're putting but the show in i feel but like, like dc's yeah, his nemesis like this he's so angry about the situation probably that he, like no matter how good it is he's not gonna like it it's just yeah he's just like they fucking took yeah, it from him and, and it was yeah not a clean breakup and they kept using his rights to make more money and made a movie that was shit uh, I know you like it. I didn't think it was that good. It wasn't shit. It wasn't shit, but compared to this now, yeah. like, in hindsight, yeah, it was shit. <laughs> it, was shit. it looked great for 2000. Uh, like, yeah. Visuals uh, but on now I didn't really like it when it came out, but yeah. I also. trash. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so sorry to interrupt you, JR. But, yo, that's it. Nine. I, I mean, I loved the. Uh, it definitely pulled me in. Um, it kind of felt like Dexter for a little while where you're just like having to breathe heavy at the, you know, scenes. You're like, I can't believe that just happened. Um, I love the whole Dr. Manhattan thing. That whole little part right there for da- Dr. Manhattan. Like I could watch those episodes. Again. That could have been a whole and, freaking series. It's just Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Like, that could have been the whole thing. I feel thing. like that's, that's just did it for me. So, um, yeah, nine, I think that's pretty good for a TV show. Dude, yeah. I mean, that gives us a, a what are we overall at? score of an 88. I'm pissed. I gave it an 8.5. Yeah. It gives us, what? that gives us an 8.8. So 88. What, uh, What's he got on Rotten Tomatoes, Z? I got you. <clears throat> I this was like sometimes it's like trudging trudging to get through this stuff like you're saying, JR, but like I was excited to get home and watch this. Like I was I was antsy. I definitely um was excited. Is that not there? Um I every time I like I got excited to wash dishes because that was like oh my, my prime time. Oh my god. 
Oh, oh it's the end. Are you guys ready? Uh oh. Yeah. All right. Do you should do you guys want to guess or should? Well, I we said eighty eight. So. I'm. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So our guess is eighty eight. Our guess eighty eight. Okay. So the the critic score, ninety six. Ninety six. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. The audience score. Fifty three. What? Fifty three, like dude. Yeah, they haven't read the Watchmen. Is saying it is garbage. They haven't read Watchmen. They're probably impatient. They probably got to, you know, a lot of times. Bro, they're probably racist. Or <laughs> <laughs> that, dude. They're like, oh, what? The show's about black people? Fuck, dude. That. There's no way. I mean. It's such a, I, a uh, I think fucked. people, too, have a hard time. Like, the, the beginning is so intense. You're like, sometimes people don't wow. like that. They want to live in that bubbly world, you know? And I feel like that's exactly what that is. And the critics love it because it's like so artistically great and written great and we got people out here who wants to watch star wars and have the 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 good guy win at the end you know what i mean even though the good guy wins at the end of this one it's yeah. still like the beginning you're dealing with emotions you don't want to face right it's like i don't want to deal with that yeah it does it does definitely discuss things that are not easy to deal with. yeah so i feel like that our audience are are definitely like that but I, you, it's wrong you, you pan i guarantee you those the You're audience wrong. did not the people that rated it did not finish the season because i i know when this first came out i watched the first two, two episodes and i took a break and I, I didn't watch it for a little bit and i was like yeah it's good but it's fucking weird i have no idea what's going to happen but also it's it wasn't the most like fast paced show. So I feel like people are just impatient and didn't give it a full chance to come to fruition. Cause once you do, you realize the genius behind every little thing that happens the entire season. So I think the critics yeah. finished it and the audience didn't. And usually we speak for the people and now we're going to have to tell you people you're, you're wrong and, and you're wrong. Finish it. <laughs> you're, <laughs> wrong. you're wrong big time. Yeah, we, we speak for you so we can also tell you when you're wrong and, and you're wrong here, guys, you gotta, you gotta give that another shot. Yeah. Faux show. Um, all right, so that's that's great. I'm glad the critics like it and the people. Before we go, before around. we go, does she have the powers or does she not? Oh, okay. So the final, it's like the killing joke. Does he kill him or not? Um, yeah. I mean, why why would he make an egg? I feel like if he'd made the egg and couldn't do it, like it, that wouldn't he wouldn't be Doctor Manhattan. So I feel like she, she. I don't know if she has the powers right then, but I think that she eventually will have the powers. She ate the egg. I feel yes. As soon as she put her foot on the water, I think that was an indication of like, hey, because it's all about belief, right? It was belief in her love for Doctor for John, and oh, uh, John for John, John. For John. fucking I first name in him, bro. Here, so oh, I these first names. <laughs> oh. um, I felt like the the story and the bar scene and them talking and it was such like a, a a real like date, you know. And she was like calling him out on his BS and it's like you're fucking stupid, you know, and. I love that she cusses, by the way. The way, she, the way she says motherfucker is, like, badass. Like, I can't even say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> She's such... The way she says motherfucker is badass. Bro, are you but, crushing on Sister Knight right now? Dude, I love Regina King, dude. I love her in every... <laughs> I get it. She's... she's, she's She's I get got it. it. She's got it. Whatever, she's got it. Whatever dude. she's got, she's got it. But Jordan, you said you get it? I get it. Yeah. I get it. Just, I didn't say I'd hit it. I have, I have respect. Respect for Regina. No, I didn't say I'd <laughs> For Mrs. It King. Were... Mrs. King, I'm sorry. <laughs> she is the king. Um, so yeah, I felt like that he gave he gave her a gift, a little piece of him to remember him by, and because he talked about that, and it's yeah. kind of like everything else we've read, or you know, there's always this like, we don't want to end it, but we're going to try, but we're still going to leave a door open, and you can't have a good TV show without leaving a door open. Yeah, I, I feel that's a door. I'm I'm in the. I uh, definitely think she has the powers too. I think that if you if you go back and and look at the Watchmen poster mm -hmm. for the for the season, it gives it away. Oh. <laughs> Does she have a fucking and symbol on her director, head or something? She doesn't have a symbol on her head, but I mean, maybe we'll post it on our social media, but Google the Watchmen poster, the very first Watchmen poster, and it completely gives it away. And also the director was uh, interviewed and he said something along the lines of, I'm not going to say whether she does or where, whether she doesn't have the powers, but all I'm going to say is that she does. The poster. Yeah, she does. Is it because of the clock? Perhaps. Nope. Right. What color is she? Oh. She's blue. Because it's like the... She's blue? She's completely blue. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I also don't... I also hope they don't do a second season. That's what I was going like to say. They're, not, they're never going to be able Cut to... Cut it. 
They're never going to be able to do something as amazing as this. So what it. the hell are they going to do? Like, I Dude, have... shake hands. It was a good run. We did something epic. Move on. Do a different project. Everybody do something else. The, the main villain died. I mean, uh, Osman turned into Osman Dio turned into a hero again. Yep. That's how uh, it ends. The the watch the the Rorschach people died. I mean, it follows the same pattern. I mean, I I don't Well, I thought that was a horn. Um I don't uh know how they will continue. I don't think they will. That's good. I don't, they need to make a loss yeah. too. I don't, I think this he's he's done, you know. I yeah, I think it's good enough for me. <clears throat> Me too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, I mean, they get, one of the best shows ever. They made a ton of seasons of Lost, so never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I was thinking of a sequel to it. <laughs> I was, like, I was thinking of a sequel saying? to a TV show. It doesn't make fucking sense. Uh, don't make a second season, please. Um, cool. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> thank you guys so much for listening this week. Um, we are very excited to enter 2020 with you guys and are very confident it will be our best year yet. Um, as always, please uh, hit us up on social media. If there's any, if there's anything you're interested in hearing about um, or anything you want us to drink, uh, please hit us up at Hop Heroes Pod on Twitter, Instagram, or on Facebook. Um, you can check us out on YouTube. We currently, Vinny, the guy in the chair, took a step back uh, temporarily, um, and so our, our editing is going to be, um, our video editing is going to be a little bit behind, but we're trying to get that back up. Um, but we will always have audio episodes coming your way. Um, Zach, anything you want to plug before we close out? I'm good, man. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. JR, anything you want to say, bro? I do. Um, Amber's uncle's in a band called Rift Raft, and they're actually, by the time this episode comes out, they've already played, but they play in local bars around the area, and they, they play, like, you know, classic music to updated music. And oh, they play classic? They play classic music. It's pretty fun to watch, um, and they've gotten really good at it, and, they've you know, uh, her, her uncle's an amazing drummer. Like, he's an amazing drummer, but... Um, fans called Riff Faff, look them up on Facebook. Um, I'm going to be handling the social media f- from now on. So on, so on Instagram. So I'll put that up there and some weird stuff. And I will do my best to put content as much as I can for Instagram. And, uh, we'll get back to pick of the weeks and statue Sundays and statue Sunday. Uh, yeah. Crazy shit like that. So, um, oh yeah. Did, let's get that pop figure. <laughs> <laughs> got him the pop figure but yeah that's Sunday, my plug the, this, is next Sunday. this is fucking great audio you guys everybody knows what you're you're holding up and showing yeah <laughs> it's the pop for cyclops <laughs> the 80th version <laughs> um i got my gopro i don't know if i'll do anything with it but it's my christmas gift it's his christmas gift that is, that is so cute you got him a christmas gift you i swear to god you thought you were gonna be here so yours was gonna be a hug oh but... <laughs> You shouldn't have. <laughs> I got that way before. <laughs> yeah. No, you're good. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you all next week.